All right, Flatbed Mechanic here today, and I'm going to show you guys how to replace the water pump in your vehicle with uh, just some few basic hand tools. I laid out what I used on this one. We're working on a Dodge Charger today. It's a 2003, and um, yeah, so just I just have a ratchet here, uh, some pliers for the hose clamp. Um, I'm using air ratchet just as if these bolts are a little quicker, but I believe the only socket size I need is is a 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter. In a quarter, in the quarter inch, and then in three eighths, I just needed a shallow 13 millimeter, um, a deep 13 millimeter, and a 14 millimeter. That about does it for the tools you're going to need to do this job. Also, further along in the video, I am going to show you the torque sequence, sequence, the torque specification for this vehicle, um, along with the belt wiring diagram. Um, I'll have a picture of that up there towards the end as well. Um, we're also going to be pulling a vacuum on the coolant system to get all the air pockets out. Uh, the reason why we're replacing this water pump is because it actually started leaking from the leap hole. Uh, the customer was seeing it underneath the vehicle. But uh, without further ado, let's get into this job. Um, I've already got the coolant tube taken off there on the top. You can see it's already loose. Uh, here's our belt tensioner. Uh, that was just a 13 millimeter bolt. And you have the spot where you can put a 3 8 ratchet to be able to take that belt tension off. And if you're not sure how a belt tensioner works, I will leave a link to that video uh, in the card right here. Um, also, there's your idler pulley. Uh, that was just a 13 millimeter bolt as well. Um, I've already disconnected the thermostat housing which is held on by two 13 millimeter bolts. As you can see there, um, there's a thermostat housing. And the thermostat itself. We're going to be reusing this on this one. Um, if you want, it's usually not a bad idea when you have these things apart. If your thermostat is inside the water pump, it's not a bad idea to spend the extra 15, 20 bucks and uh, put a new thermostat in there as well. This is our new water pump we're going to be installing. And I'll show you where this uh, belt tensioner and the idler pulley are located on the water pump. As you can see here, the belt tensioner bolts up right there. And it also has a little alignment pin too. You want to make sure you have it lined up when you install that right there. And then the idler pulley, this bolt's on the left side here, we just have one, one 13 millimeter bolt, just make sure you have it centered and uh, and you torque that down. And on this vehicle, the bigger part of the thermostat is going to go into the water pump, so when you put that back together, you just want to want to make sure um, you have that in correctly. And mine actually came with a new coolant temp sensor. If you have to transfer it, just make sure you put some thread lock on that. I also have a diagram of all where the bolt holes are um, and the torque specs later on in the video here. Alright, so what we're going to do next is uh, we're just going to zip all these um, 13 millimeter bolts that actually hold the water pump to the timing cover. And like I said, if you're not sure where the bolts are, I do have a screenshot of all the bolt hole locations later on in the video. All right, next you're going to want to take off this lower radiator hose, and this one has a spring clamp on it. I was actually able to remove this with some channel locks. Uh, they do have a special tool for those spring clamps. I'll try and leave a link in the video description below where you can buy those on Amazon if I can find it. Um, it can be a little tricky to get off with channel locks. I was able to on this one, though. And 
All right, next uh, this water pump's ready to pull up. So we're just gonna pull it out of there. As you can see, there's the impeller on that one. It looks pretty good. This one was actually leaking from the weep hole, indicating that the water pump bearings were starting to fail. Uh, that's why we're replacing this one here. In most cases, that's where they usually leak. Next, you just want to want to take some uh, emery cloth to the surface of the gasket area to make sure it's nice and clean. This one had a rubber gasket, so it's relatively easy easy to get the surface clean here. Also, we're going to be replacing this O-ring where the coolant tube goes into the water pump. Alright, and once I got this all, as I was cleaning this up with emery cloth, I noticed we're starting to get some pretty decent amount of pitting inside the chiming cover. So that's always something you're going to want to check when you do these types of jobs. Uh, apparently they weren't flushing their coolant enough, it got acidic, and it started eating at this aluminum cover. This isn't bad enough at this point to where um, the cover is going to have to be replaced. But if this water pump fails again, there's a good chance that that may need to have to be replaced at this time. The water pump uh, we have here actually came with the rubber seal pre-installed. If that's the case on yours, you just come on and run your finger all along it and make sure it's pushed down in all the way. We got this all set up here. I'm just going to zip all these in with my air ratchet to save some time. And then we're going to go around with a torque wrench and torque these to, uh, let's see here, yeah, 18 foot-pounds or 24 newton meters and it shows you the sequence in which you should be tightening these as well. Uh, you can pause the video and take a closer look at that if you need to. If we go into water pump labor too, um, the standard labor time on this is 1.4 hours to do this job, so a relatively easy job to do. Definitely, uh, definitely something you can do at home in your driveway. So now we're just going to go around and torque all these to uh, 18 foot-pounds. And you can refer back to that diagram if you need to know the torque uh, sequence. Alright, so we got that all taken care of. Um, I just put in this, pushed in this coolant tube. I usually like to smear a little silicone around the um, O-ring anytime I'm installing some kind of tube like that with an O-ring on it just for reassurance that it's not going to leak. And this one just had a 10 or 8 millimeter bolt that was um, holding this down. We're going to go ahead and plug in our coolant temperature sensor. Like I said, if you have, if your water pump doesn't come with one, you have to transfer it. Just make sure you use some thread sealer on that. We're going to install our thermostat, big side down, and then our coolant hose. As you can see, I just have my channel locks on this spring clamp. Now on a lot of vehicles, uh, you're not going to have the space to get channel locks in there, and you will need the um, special tool for those spring clamps, which I'll leave a link for in the description below. We're going to go ahead and install our belt, belt tensioner. That is just a 13 millimeter bolt as well. And then we're going to install our idler pulley. And here is a picture of the belt diagram in case uh, you need a reference back on the direction that goes. Alright, so we have our belts all routed here. And we're just going to apply some pressure to the spring-loaded tensioner so we can slip it over the last pulley here. And once we get that all on there, 
Now, obviously, uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do once we get this thing running is make sure after you start it up, you're going to want to shut it off and make sure your belt is still on all the pulleys properly. Just use my pry bar to pop my ratchet out of there, make it a little easier. Now we're going to go ahead and um, get this coolant flush machine hooked up. All this does is pull a vacuum on the whole system so it pulls out any voids. So when it, basically it's going to use it's the vacuum that it created to suck this coolant back into the coolant system, which is going to make sure we don't have any hot spots or anything like that. After, just be sure to run your vehicle up to operating temperature. Make sure you have no leaks and make sure the vehicle is not going to overheat. And then you're going to want to let it cool off and double check your coolant level. Also, check your owner's manual for the correct type of cooling. That's about going to do it for this video today, guys. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Flat Red Mechanic. Hit that bell notification and the thumbs up button. Till next time.